Hello everyone and welcome back to the 1921 World Chess Championship match between Emmanuel Lasker and Jose Raul Capablanca. We already checked out three games. Uh, if you haven't seen them, do check them out. Uh, the links to the games will be in the description below as well as the link to the entire Capablanca saga if you are j joining us uh, just now. So uh, first three games ended in a draw. This is game four. Lasker again with the white pieces. Let's see if he can uh, well uh, steal, steal the first full point of the match. So Lasker opens with d4, the same he, uh, as he did uh, the last time he had white pieces. We have d5, uh, c4, e6, knight to c3, and of course we have the queen's gambit decline. But uh, here Lasker doesn't go for his knight f3 and e3 line. You know how we discussed that, uh, Capablanca said that e3 shouldn't be played, not very principled. You should bring the bishop into the game before closing the, the central pawn structure. So here Lasker goes bishop to g5 right away. He took Capablanca's advice, uh, well... Not not really, but, uh, you know, we could uh, say he did. Uh, bishop to e7, Capablanca continues. Uh, we have e3 now. Now it's okay to play e3. We have castles by black, knight to f3, and now knight b to d7. Uh, Capablanca is now ready uh, to capture on c4 as soon as Lasker develops the bishop. First queen to c2, still waiting to see how uh, Capablanca will treat the position. And now Capablanca says that c5 is uh, the most uh, most played move here, but he goes for c6. It's a different line, but even today c5 and c6, it's a matter of choice. You can play you can play both. Uh, and here we have bishop to d3. Although Capablanca says that uh, queenside castle is a much more energetic uh, and uh, can give a, a well a, a more colorful game. Uh, but that Lasker was probably worried about uh, him being attacked on the, on the queen side himself. Even though uh, even today a queen side castle in this position is is played and White has a lot of success with it. Uh, but okay, bishop to d3. Like we said, Capablanca was waiting for this move, so now he can capture on c4 and force Black to waste the tempo. Uh, we have bishop captures on c4 and now knight to d5, a standard idea. In this opening, you want to trade as many pieces here as you can. Uh, bishop captures, queen captures, and now we have kingside castle by Lasker. There were attempts of knight to e4 here if uh, white wants to further complicate things, if you don't want to allow black to just trade pieces. Uh, but here Lasker goes for the, for the well, uh, we could say timid uh, kingside castle. Uh, Capablanca uh, f goes for further trades. We have knight captures on c3, b captures, and now b6, preparing bishop to b7, c5, bringing the rook into the game. Uh, and so on, depending on what Lasker plays. We have bishop to d3, and here the h7 pawn is under attack. So how do you defend it? With g6 or with h6? Uh, I'm sure nowadays mm, pretty much everyone will play h6, and uh, it, <laughs> this position has been reached a uh, few times after this um, game, Capablanca, Lasker versus Capablanca, and every time after this game, h6 was played in this position. But the only game in this position uh, where g6 was played is this, uh, where uh, Capablanca faced Lasker. So g6 is uh, a very old move, and it was never repeated again. So uh, now uh, Lasker continues. We have a4. He wants to push a5, get rid of his uh, isolated pawn, bishop to b7, and now a5. Uh, Capablanca frees his light square bishop with c5. He wants to attack uh, Lasker's very strong center. And now uh, probably e4 would, would be played today. Seems like a very modern move, but Lasker went for knight to d2. And Capablanca says it's a, it's a good move. Uh, the, it's hard to find a better one. Uh, and now he, he still waits to see what uh, Capablanca will do. Of course, Lasker is not interested in messing up his very strong uh, center here, uh, but uh, Capablanca has to attack it once again. Here he plays e5. Uh, he wants either Lasker to decide what he's going to do with the center, or uh, he will start capturing in the center. But here uh, there was also a very interesting line b5, just try and trick Lasker into capturing the pawn. <laughs> now if you capture, uh, then you just get uh, c captures on d4, and now it doesn't really matter what you capture it with, then queen g5, and now black wins as the g2 pawn is under attack. Uh, there's the threat of checkmate, but also you can't defend the, both the checkmate and the bishop on b5 here. But okay, after b5 you don't really have to capture it, uh, you can just ignore it, you can play e4 and then the game just continues. c4 doesn't do anything for Capablanca, if c4 then white just keeps his very strong center, moves the bishop, he's going to transfer it to f3, and there's no problem here. Uh, so, after knight to d2, we have e5, Capablanca continues attacking the center, uh, we have bishop to e4, Bishop captures on e4, queen captures on e4, and now rook 8 to e8. 
uh, just developing this rook very nicely. Uh, and now comes a captures on b6. A captures on b6, and now rook to a7. Here, Lasker's position seems to be improving, uh, and he's gaining much more from the position. He's preparing queen to b7, uh, well, maybe even queen to c6 to, to try and, uh, you know, uh, create some havoc in 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 uh, black's queen side uh but capablanca decides no you are not uh playing that we will now trade queens he plays e captures on d4 and now he was probably expecting captures captures and then some trades in the center captures captures let's say e captures here and then maybe rookie two going after after the knight here uh but uh lasker decides i will not just yet capture here first queen to c6 he doesn't just want to Trade down into a droish endgame and waste his white pieces. So queen to c6, now threatening to win material here. Uh, Capablanca defends, rook to d8, and now c captures on d4. We have c captures, uh, and now e captures on d4. If knight to e4, with ideas of maybe uh, rook captures and knight to f6 check, uh, it doesn't really work because here Capablanca had knight to b8 planned, attacking the queen and the rook on a7, and here you would have to trade down into this endgame. Queen captures on g6 first, h captures, rook captures, queen on e7, and after this trade here, you would have this, again, an endgame with, with equal material on the board. Uh, so not interested. He played e captures on d4. Uh, and now queen to f6 by Capablanca. He's now ready to trade. You cannot capture, of course, as the queen is hanging. So queen captures on f6 with knight captures on f6. And now knight to f3. Uh, just defending that d4 pawn. Uh, we have knight to d5. And now rook to b1. Uh, pressuring this pawn here uh, with f6, Capablanca now prepares rook to f7 to, to either trade rooks or to get his rook into the game, both is fine with Capablanca. King to f1, Lasker starts bringing his king into the game, rook to f7, and now rook uh, b to a1. We have rook d to e d7, now offering to trade. Uh, Lasker trades here, and here uh, uh, Lasker played g3, and it was in this position the players agreed to a draw, as there is nothing more to do here. It's uh, pretty much, uh, well, well, it is a draw and end game. Uh, or as Capablanca said it in his book, uh, there was no reasonable motive to continue such a game, as there was not very much to be done by either player, which is pretty much similar to what I always say, so I, I really enjoyed that uh, little sentence by Capablanca as well. Uh, so this is game four of their 1921 World Chess Championship match, uh, also ended in a draw, so first four games uh, end, <laughs> ended in a draw, uh, not much uh, different from, uh, from let's say, uh, Carlsen versus Caruana or Carlsen versus Karakin uh, in 2016 and 2018. Uh, so, you know, even in, even a hundred years ago, uh, World Chess Championship matches, uh, it, you know, it uh, it, it uh, t took him some time to get, uh, you know, uh, things things moving. Uh, but, you know, things will be moving, as, as you will see. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's game four. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Tim O'Connor, Lawrence Morris, uh, Hagar Afriat, uh, Jack Bancroft, and Marco Marocolo for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, most likely with game five of the uh, World Chess Championship match. If you have any good suggestions from the FIDE Grand Prix that just started, also, you know, uh, do, do suggest something from that. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, I will be checking for your suggestions as usual. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.